the fourth dimension. It measures out our lives, our recreation, our rest and our labors. Time is sometimes on our side. More usually, we're working against the clock. Time heals. It waits for no man. And very often, the margin between success and failure is only a matter of time. Not just seconds or minutes, but sometimes hours as well, are the stuff of commercial and operational decisions in many walks of life. The airline businesses of the world are no exception. In the early flying days, some flights lasted only minutes, or even less. Gradually, with increasing daring, those early pioneers ventured further and further from the safety of a smooth landing ground. Eventually, from ground of any sort at all. Time airborne equaled distance covered. If the engine stopped en route, the pilot was left literally with only a wing and a prayer. More than one engine added a degree of security to flights like Alcock and Brown's historic 16-hour Atlantic crossing. And there grew a feeling that the more engines you had, the better, for reliability and performance, although this could be carried to extremes. The hangover effect of this was to survive until well beyond its time. In the 1940s, Twin-engine flying boats were making the 30-hour journey non-stop from Australia to Ceylon. By the 1950s, the technology and reliability of engines had come a long way. In spite of this, a twin-engine aircraft was limited by the FAA regulation of 1953 to only 60 minutes flying time at single-engine speed from an adequate diversion airfield. This figure was generally agreed to be arbitrarily chosen, but then we tend to measure time in units, hours being among them. For another 20 years, the more is better philosophy remained unchallenged on the long haul routes across the world's oceans and unpopulated land areas. The pressure for change came in 1974, when the Airbus A300 was introduced, a wide-bodied, twin-aisle, twin-engined aircraft. This aircraft overturned the theory that seat mile cost advantages were the sole preserve of large multi-engine aircraft. The A300 has notched up millions of hours of successful experience since its introduction two decades ago. Airlines the world over responded enthusiastically to the twin engine economic benefits on offer and longer range aircraft such as the Airbus 310 and Boeing 767 soon followed the A300, serving routes where there was not the passenger volume to fill the larger multi-engined aircraft. There was a problem, however. FAR 121, the Federal Aviation Administration 1953 regulation. It was a ruling which was then already over 20 years old and designed for an era of obsolete piston-engined aircraft. On a transatlantic flight, this 60-minute limit would prevent a direct routing from London to New York. Because enough adequate diversion airports exist, the pilot of a twin-engined aircraft would be allowed to plan a course that ensured that he remained within 60 minutes flying time at a speed sustainable on the remaining one engine from one of these airports. The route would demand two changes of direction and look like this. So, twins were either totally excluded from some routes where there were no adequate diversion airfields or were made to follow less efficient flight plans with all the cost penalties that could be expected. 
Yet modern turbofans are more than 20 times as reliable as the piston engines of the 1950s. The Federal Aviation Administration recognized the anomaly and, in 1985, introduced its requirements for extended range twin engine operations, now widely known as ETOPS. Let's see what this meant. The permitted time distance from a diversion airfield was doubled from 60 to 120 minutes provided that certain conditions were met. On the transatlantic routes, this now permitted a direct course, saving time and perhaps two and a half tons of fuel on a typical flight. Other routes, such as, for example, Nairobi to Singapore, which were previously closed to twins under the 60-minute limit, were now opened up. The world before ETOPS look like this. Large areas, including some over land, were forbidden territory to twins. After the introduction of the 120 minute limit, the picture had changed dramatically. From 1988, the civil aviation authorities, again with stringent conditions, authorized diversion times of up to 180 minutes. The world picture for twins was now transformed. This was not an exercise in bending the rules, but a recognition of how much more reliable technology had become. Elevation to the new thresholds was not automatic. It was conditional upon the proven experience, both of the airframe-engine combination and of the operator airline. There are commercial pressures, of course, but Airbus industry is not in the business of being driven by purely commercial considerations. Our primary objective is to design and build aircraft which meet the stringent requirements of the world's aviation authorities. And this is what we do. It's very important for us to demonstrate to the world's airworthiness authorities that we satisfy all the requirements and then we can go on and prove to the world that we have the best aircraft. Broadly, the requirement for a particular aircraft to achieve ETOPS approval was that up to 250,000 engine hours operation could be demonstrated to agreed standards. The operating airline would also need to have one year of ETOPS conditions experience in order to be certificated up to the 120 minutes level. After a further year of experience, this could be extended to 180 minutes. Even before the airframe engine operator conditions can be met, there has to be agreed type approval. Now, type approval requires not only proven soundness of design and construction, but also specific modifications and improvements to ensure safety in the event of failure. The fail-safe operation requirements of an aircraft with type approval for ETOPS include, for example, a cargo fire suppression system which gives adequate protection in excess of the possible diversion time. Standby electrical power generation must be provided to cover the possible failure of one engine and the normal auxiliary power unit. Other backup systems for hydraulics and air generation are required. The certification authorities will approve an aircraft as ETOPS capable once they're satisfied on all the relevant points. These points are recorded in an aircraft configuration, maintenance and procedures or CMP document. But that is not the end of the story, since the situation is constantly under review. Reliability in an aircraft system is measured in a number of ways. Dispatch reliability, mean time between removals and mean time between failures. An onboard computer could be interrogated to supply the needed information. The Reliability Tracking Board, or a series of airworthiness review meetings, regularly brings together the authorities, the airframe manufacturers, and the engine makers to assess the ETOPS performance of each type and engine combination. This is a vital part of the ETOPS approval process. Effectively, it is an exercise in building on collective experience, monitoring and modifying as events unfold in order to anticipate and head off any problem which threatens to recur. The wiring and the improvement of the chafe guard is in place for the uh, A5F and for the ADE-1. The most vital aspect of ETOPS is, of course, engine reliability. The IFSD rate, 
or frequency of in-flight shutdown incidents is a measure of this. The major concern is the risk of the failure of the second engine on a twin from a cause totally independent of any failure of the first. Of course, if the fuel ran out, it would affect all engines with a common cause, and it would not matter how many engines there were, the aircraft could not be saved. Reassuringly, the results obtained so far provide an astonishing picture of just how small is the risk of double engine failure from separate causes. An ETOPS equipped Airbus aircraft under the 120 minute criteria might reasonably expect to experience a total thrust loss from independent causes after an equivalent time span from the present day which would take us back long before the very earliest settled agricultural communities to 17,880 years ago, well into the last ice age. Airbus and the engine manufacturer between them can provide an aircraft with proven reliability track record for ETOPS. However, having a suitable aircraft doesn't necessarily mean that you can use it on ETOPS routes. There's another essential requirement. The airlines flying ETOPS routes must convince the national certification authorities of their own competence before gaining operational approval. Maintenance programs, crew training, and airline familiarity with an aircraft type are all taken into account. There are other factors which apply to the particular ETOPS route being flown and the conditions there. Are there many or few possible diversion airports? Is the weather normally stable? Are communications good or not? The isochrones, the circles which define the diversion times, must be drawn so as to take into account the speed during descent, whether any obstacles need to be cleared, and the varying weight of the aircraft as it consumes fuel. The application for ETOPS must be made on the basis of all the needs and conditions of the particular planned route. Experience of Airbus aircraft flown on ETOPS routes the world over is now very extensive. Although, up to now, the aircraft were not actually designed with ETOPS in mind, but have proved themselves well able to meet the varied and demanding criteria we have described. Now, we have a new generation of aircraft designed specifically for ETOPS routes, the twin-engined A330. It's important to remember that ETOPS is based on built-up experience, pointing to future performance. The A330 is very closely related to its contemporaries in the Airbus range. These are aircraft sharing an identical design philosophy, first put into service in 1988. The A330 shares an identical fuselage and many other systems with the four-engined A340, by definition, not an ETOPS candidate, but playing its part in notching up hours of operational experience for many systems having commonality with A330 systems. The four-engined Airbus has been developed to meet the requirement for some very long-range routes where it has been demonstrated that the twin cannot be as economical. The A330 successfully completed its ETOPS trials on the North Atlantic before entering service. During five separate flights, the aircraft demonstrated its ability to be flown on one engine for a total of six hours in all and with various other systems failures simulated to increase the pressure and workload on the aircrew. The engines offered with the A330 have all evolved from families of established engines. These have separately achieved many hours of operating experience, often on multi-engined aircraft. This new aircraft and its power plant are based on evolutionary rather than revolutionary principles. Its performance and reliability can be judged according to derivative rather than predictive criteria.
with the A330, ETOPS can be offered to operators very early on, just because it is based upon many tried and proven products and systems. The operators can then go on to gain their vital stamp of operational approval. Maintenance work done on the worldwide fleet of A330s can be credited to a particular airline's account. Advanced training and ETOPS on non-ETOPS routes can also be used to speed up the process of airline approval. The process of ETOPS approval has developed over the years and will continue to evolve. In the same way that systems used in other aircraft can contribute experience to an ETOPS aircraft, so too can airlines benefit from ETOPS experience gained by other airlines on the same routes as their own. There's an Airbus ETOPS assistance program which will help the operators, no matter what the size of their business or their experience of the ETOPS routes of the world. Airbus provides the airline with an ETOPS pre-qualified aircraft and offers considerable support enabling the airline to gain its own ETOPS operational qualification as soon as possible. ETOPS approval is a complex procedure which has grown from small beginnings. Time will tell as to whether the requirements will need to be further modified. It is a process which feeds on experience. Success is based on experience. And experience in ETOPS operation is all a matter of time.